So we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. It is 5.32. We have no visitors, so let's rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion uh, for approval of the, or actually, I will just move to approve tonight's agenda as presented. I'll second. Hearing a motion and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go straight into discussion. And the purpose of the meeting is to discuss and finalize the uh, advertisement tools that we're going to be using for the superintendent search um, to make sure everyone's good with all the language on it. Um, Bob put a lot of effort into it. He met with um, Brooke and did her thing. And of course, I chimed in with my two cents worth. So <laughs> I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with everything that's on there and we're all in agreement. Um, and Brooke and Morgan worked hard all day, correct? Yes. On the uh, brochure that was sent to you guys. It is in the Google Drive, um, but she, so I don't know if the one that was sent earlier is as updated as this one. Does it do that? Okay. So you need to go into your drive, and if you do superintendent search, you should find a folder, and in that folder is the brochure. Yes. <clears throat> and then something else that we can spend some time on. When um, I t chatted with Brooke last week, uh, she had mentioned that, you know, maybe they, the principals, I guess Morgan, she solicited, Morgan solicited the principals for some pictures, but then, you know, there's always a ton of stuff. So Brooke brought up the idea of possibly preparing a video um, for this, the prospective applicants to see everything from mm -hmm. all the different schools. So um, I think it's a great idea, but I also don't know everyone else's opinion on that and don't want to just be like, sure, do something extra on top of all your job duties. Um, so which brochure is this in our email? It was an earlier version of oh, this one. Okay. So what's the one that we're looking at now? It should is it in the board member doc? So it's in it's in that same folder, and it's the Bob revisions one. There is some high two sentences that I think are highlighted. It's number three. So twenty twenty two superintendent search in parentheses. It has three in the PDF. Is that the correct one? The one for revisions is. And if you would like, I can resend it, but it looks like I see Dave in there. Ramona, I see you in there. The title okay. is Bob Revisions at the End. What was that show? I have, I have no idea where you're even at. Let me, oh, yeah. let me well, reshare, let me reshare this together. whole folder with you guys. Good idea. Yeah. Oh, there. So go to Oops, I'll do that and make sure that you're in. Okay, so we're just looking at the document right now, not the pretty PDF with all the right. demographics on it. Okay. <coughs> So are we looking at the one that says Morgan? Morgan's no, copy? Bob yeah. revisions. Bob revisions. There's two sentences that are highlighted.
words, so let's see. You don't mention um, anything about um, transportation. The, do you think we need to, as far as the transportation department itself, or the length of the transportation miles, or that's a good idea. Um, being that it is so large, <coughs> what are we, the second yeah, largest in the of state? It's significant. Yeah, I think it's a second, or I think it might be first in one aspect and second in another. Um, in that we've, it looks like we've done fairly well covering some of the other things. Um, because that is a big, I would think that would be a big um, managerial aspect of, or at least oversight, you know. So under district demographics, we do state geographically covering approximately 462 square miles, mm -hmm. <coughs> but we're not specifically stating anything about bus mileage, yeah. which is significant. Yeah. I mean, it's up to you. What do you guys think, Brooke and Bob? You could probably integrate. Um, I know that they travel probably about 3,000 miles a day in busing, um, so I could get that exact number from Jessica tomorrow and we can maybe um, integrate it into the sentence okay. um, I would want to get the exact wording from you guys and then all I have to do is plug in the number mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys think that's significant to uh, being that I mean, we've bought a lot of buses since I've been on this board <laughs> every year two to four every year you know it's a it's a big expense you know um. so if we said something such as Traveling 3,000 uh, miles daily. Bus miles. Um, or transporting students over 3,000 miles daily. Does that sound because if we took off the okay, so if we took off the first sentence or the first portion of the sentence, excuse me, and we began with nestled in the panhandle of North Idaho, located in Bonner County and overlapping into Kootenai or into Bonner County. Uh, transporting students over 3,000 miles 
daily. Could you say the district transports? Comma. Uh, in a district. So I'm basically moving it approximately. So square if it's miles, square miles, square miles, square miles. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so nestled in the Panhandle of North Idaho, located in Kootenai County and overlapping Bonner County transporting students over 3,000 miles daily in a district covering approximately 462 square miles. Yeah, it seems kind of, okay. So it I, seems bulky to me, but. I appreciate that we talk about K-Tech and what K-Tech is, but it just seems like to take an entire square, an entire block okay. on something that is not something that this person this person would be involved in it, but not like running that program. So it just seems, I don't know. It seems like a lot to have that uh, it was, that much. It was brand new at the last hiring. I think mm -hmm. that's probably why they emphasized it. But yeah. So we could technically. Um, let's see. I mean, I don't mind having you know something in there without well, it, but it just seems like. A lot, and it doesn't. Oh, I guess it does have the newer programs and stuff too. But oh yeah, I went through because what they had, I'm like, oh, they don't. Not so yeah, good. It, they've it's but changed since then. So. We could stay Kootenai Technical Education Campus, and then K Tech is a joint venture between our district, Coeur d'Alene, and Post Falls School District, and is located on 40 acres within our district. Should and just end it there. Mm -hmm. Could you say something about that it's vocational? Yeah, because not everybody is going to know what it. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, offering vocational offering programs. Eighteen vocational programs. Or whatever right. The number is. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are all educated. <laughs> I won't be here the 9th and 10th of May. I'll be on the Oregon Coast. What? I don't know. Sorry. So K-Tech is a joint venture between LJSD, Coeur d'Alene, and Post Falls, offering vocational education and located on 40 acres within the LJSD. Offering um, how many programs? Okay. Well, located on 40 acres could go back up there to the joint venture. Uh, it's a joint venture or uh, how about one? <coughs> I'm trying to do it in red so that she can, so you can go back okay. in and know where we're at. So p is located on 40 acres. Do you know how many programs they offer out there? 
I don't, uh, not off the top of my head. He told us the other day, but I didn't. Let me look at their website. Didn't hear it very well, so I'm not sure. K Tech? Yeah. It's every single one that's listed there. I took it off their website. Oh, did you? Yeah, because I went and compared what we had because I thought, I don't remember that when we were there. And so mm -hmm. then I pulled the website off and I was like, oh, no. So I just went and redlined and list and listed everything. So it's like 15 or so. Top yeah, it's in the teams, right? Yeah, nine. There's a lot of ands. Or yeah, are the ands separate? Four. Is like automated manufacturing and automated design right. two separate programs, right. or I just wouldn't put a specific yeah. number on it. Yeah. Right, Numerous, you. several, <laughs> <laughs> a plethora. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what you're saying. So, um, what if we change it to uh, K Tech is located on 40 acres within the LJSD district and is a joint venture with Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls School Districts offering vocational education to area students. Yeah, like that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Or offering various vocational opportunities. But I think it's education. So mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I, I like those points. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's still a joint venture with Lakeland too, though. You got Lakeland School District located, and I should say, a joint venture between Lakeland, Corn Lake, and Post Falls. Okay. So I can take that off. I think. All right. So it was a joint venture uh, with Lakeland, Coeur d'Alene, and Post Falls School District mm -hmm. offering vocational education to area students. Yeah. Or do you want uh, is a joint venture between more appropriate? I split hairs on the words, sorry. It's one. It's one of my charms. <laughs> I would say in partnership. Ooh, it's a joint venture in partnership. Um, okay, so, oh, okay, still okay. You would say how you would just say it is a partnership between or with. Okay, so located on 40 acres within the LJSD district and is a partnership mm -hmm. between, I think would be more appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, it is. between Lakeland, Coeur d'Alene, and Post Falls School Districts mm -hmm. offering vocational education to area yeah. students. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thinking the board is made up of all the superintendents, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is, plus a couple other, that is mm -hmm. who sits on the board. Oh, so then we should be disclosing that to them that they're going to yeah, be they sitting on the board. They sit on this board, yeah. That's the joint partnership. We all fund it, and they all sit on the board together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But there, there are two uh, community members that yeah. sit on that same board. Mm -hmm. they're, they're from business and industry. I don't know who they are. Right. Uh, Ron Nielsen is still one of them. Ron still on. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was an original one. Yep. Yeah. And I don't know who the other the other person is, but Cody had mentioned that one earlier. Okay. okay. So then, uh, I, I guess we were that to that. Um,
would that be under the opportunities and challenges? Or is this one you can do? Represent the Lakeland District as a board member for Gay Tech. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add it to the end, and you can place it wherever it deems appropriate, unless we want to decide where it should go. Represent LASD as a KTEC board member. One of the things that I felt was important was to list the federal pre-kindergarten program, uh, the base program, and the armed guard program. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, I'm not sure if it was Bob or um, Brooke that said we should also list the dual enrollment opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody have any qualms with putting those on there? No, I know the more you know, understand yeah. about the district and the different the complexities yeah. and right. the yeah. yeah okay I think the better you know the how powers. comprehensive our yeah. our district is with mm -hmm. different programs and okay I agree. Oh, another thing that when I was talking with Brooke, we did change, so we should discuss this. Um, initially on there it said um, an operating budget of 42,086335 and then or 42 yes and then when you met with Brooke you had talked about the confusion between the fact that that's not that's just the m &L. so we need to decide if the current operating budget that we're going to display is inclusive of all of our funds or just the M and L, and that's what the forty-two is. That's that's no, it is not. That is just the M and L. Yeah. Because yeah. I I had Brooke, I said no, it's because she was like no, it's the total, and I'm like no, it's the M and L only. It's like fifty-three. Yeah, right at fifty-four million. Okay. Yeah. 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 We went no. back and Which a look. so yeah. I wanted to make sure it's like either. Either we make it very specific that you're just looking at a small portion here, which I think honestly they should see the entire picture, the fi entire financial picture. But um, I I wanted people's input on that because I didn't want to just be like, no, you're not going to. Do that. So whatever the total is, that's what uh, yeah. I thought we looked at the budget. Yeah, and I we looked at it um, incorrectly because as I'm looking at it. The wrong on here, yeah. So we just looked at the general M and O, and then the other funds, which is forty two zero eight six three three five, and then um, all other funds was fifteen million two hundred eighty six eight three two. I mean, you could say that, say yeah. with the general M and O, and then all other funds totaling. I guess. Well, I think we should just say a current op a, a current uh, district budget. The current is that. Of and then what? What's the total of the forty-two and fifteen? Like she's, she's adding it up. Perfect, because I'm not that good in my head. I right need a calculator. That's why God created them. <laughs> Those are big numbers. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
167, you did a period instead of a comma. It should be 167. Yeah. Let me do this Wait. more time. It's 57,373,167. Yeah. So budget and then there's all these other little budgets that are over on the side that are encompassed in this yeah through that they have their mm -hmm. own but that at least of. that sort of gives them right. a closer picture I think should, should we indicate that that's total because that's where the confusion I understand whether or not that's general fund or right. yeah, yeah, so total budget of a current total budget of course a, so a current total district budget or a current total, total budget? budget yeah. I like total district budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah, and I because I, mean, I know always add the. I mean, although it's going to be changing here soon, but we can always add the summary right and statement that's, that's printed in the. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. It's on your website. I wanted the word current <coughs> because I knew it would be changing here. Right. Right. Pretty would you shortly. like a link to? Uh, we can put a link in there to the um, budget page. Financial. I think that would be. Oh, that'd be smart. great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That way, if they want to see or they have, you know. Then they would be able to see for themselves as mm -hmm. well what you know what we mean by that if they yeah. are not sure. Right. right. One of the qualifications that got removed because it was incomplete from because I must have done something, I imagine that, was uh, the ability to interact with, and I believe it said staff, parents, uh, community, and board. Mm -hmm. Do we want to list that back under the qualifications? I do see that. Under yeah. qualifications, it says demonstrated leadership. Ability in working with students, staff, parents, and the general public. Okay, then we must have combined it. Okay. Agency willing to establish residency in the Lakeland School District. Should, should it say that or should it say in the mobile area? Actually, it should say LJSD because we 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 can. I'm sorry, Dave. What? Oh, I was just saying. Should it say established in the Lakeland School District, or should it say within 
so many miles away from the school district. Because you might not, what if they buy a house in Post Falls or something? What if they build a lot more houses or a quarter lane or so just outside the district or something, you know? What if it's willing to establish res residency in Cleveland County? Yeah, that's better. Right. Well, I'm, I'm or, from Franklin Joy School District. Okay. That's where I am on that one. Okay, not a problem. The reason for that is that it's really important, I think, that the superintendent become a, a part of the community yeah, and see her often within the community. And I agree. I don't want us to get into another <coughs> situation where um, the superintendent is parking her motorhome on the bus barn. And I just, I, I, I can respect people can live wherever they want, but I think it gives a really bad uh, flavor in people's mouths. There is just so much, <coughs> um, yeah, so much that wasn't, it wasn't good with the public. They didn't like no. that idea. And I don't think there's any wrong, anything wrong with living. You know, there's a totally different view when you're, from the community and in the community mm -hmm. when you're transporting in and out. I've seen it even with teachers at certain schools. When you have a school even that has the majority of the staff not from the local area. Right. There's a lot of cultural things that are uh, misinterpreted. Right. You know, or assumed to be something mm -hmm. that they're not. Well, and we're not limiting them to just Rathdrum because no. we've got Apple, Spirit Lake, Bayview, you know, Hayden, Hauser. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Square miles, pick one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I do. I don't think we're limiting them, but I get what you're saying. If they would get a house in Post Falls or whatever. Right. But for the the superintendent, I I think it's. We can put a C map in the lake. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to live here. <laughs> okay. We must live across the street from the district house. <laughs> <That's right. Yeah. laughs> oh, wait, so there's no house in the middle there. Sorry. Okay, under the opportunities and challenges. Mm -hmm. um, what was initially presented to us was, has experience in selection and implementation of educational priorities consistent with interests, uh, consistent with the interests and needs of student, staff, board, and community. Okay, I struck it because I just, thought that was so broad, but then Bob wanted it back on the document, and instead of has experience in, he felt the more appropriate word was approaches, selection and implementation of educational priorities consistent with the interests and needs of student, staff, board, and community. I still don't like the sentence. <laughs> what part don't you like about it? Um, because I think the selection and implementation of educational priorities consistent with the interests and needs of the student, staff, board, and community. Um, what does that mean? What does it mean, exactly? And how are they going to be able to tell us how they're going to tackle that goal if we don't even know what the goal means? Sure. So it means that they would have talked to all those people and gathered input from all those people along with their own professional background and understanding of education and know the proper implementation of how to um, achieve all those things. I mean, that's what I read in it. You, you can't, in other words, I understand the sentence to say in order to implement the educational priorities, and understand the educational priorities of the district, that you have to take into consideration all these people. That should be your approach, is a full community input. And here are the community groups, so to speak. Is that? All the stakeholders. Yeah. yeah. But see, and I, I, I respect that, yeah. I mean, helping clear that up for me, because yeah. to me, I think what's really sticking out in my 
argumentative sure. brain, I guess, is this whole educational priorities. Okay, mm -hmm. we all know what the educational priorities should be in the sense that these kids are coming to school to learn. We have the IDAPA, we have the state regulations, we have all these things that we need to adhere to to educate our children, right? So how, I mean, I think the educational priorities are already set. Uh, they can't deviate from that. Uh, well, they're set in the sense that some of minimal amount is explicit, but the majority of those are very broad, leaving the input of the reflection of the community to implement that thing. You think of a standard. A standard yeah. just says, by the end of first grade, you have to know 120 sight words. Okay, how are we going to get there? What does that look like? How is, you know, is it this curriculum, that curriculum? Um, I, I mean, they are sort of set in, but they're they're pretty broad. They're not. But if the educational priority is the children have to learn 120 words, yeah, what is the superintendent? Well, yeah. so the educational priority is the standard, isn't right. it? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I Well, the standard would be how you, in my brain, the standard would be how you, and I'm not an educator. Yeah, I, I know. Neither am I. The standard would be how you attain the goal, and the goal is what the board comes together on the SIP plan and says, these scores are too low. Right, right. So how are we going to get there? And I would see the superintendent in this sentence would then have to look at what the board says, look at what the standard says, and then the teacher's input about, just like we had with the math curriculum. Um, I, I, I think it's I think it's a good talking point. Even if we might not know exactly what it is, we need them to tell us what this is. And, and, and then we can have that discussion because Based on where we're coming from, I think this might have needed a deeper discussion with all those around them. What was initially, I think this is a lot of it. what may have been issue or contention mm -hmm. previously. Yeah. And so I, I, I guess I, I, I kind of looked at it on a somewhat broader perspective. Mm -hmm. And that is, you, you know, what's hot in the in the news nowadays, and, and you know what parents are interested in not uh, interested in not having in school. Right. The, the superintendent needs to be responsive to those mm -hmm. things that are brought forth by the community or by the board or, or whomever. You know, if we say when we're going to have CRT in the school district, mm -hmm. the superintendent needs to be reflective of that and responsive to that and willing to carry that forth. Mm -hmm. And make sure that it's not being done behind closed doors yeah. and laughed about. Yeah. I don't know if that so helps me. I mean, we can leave that sentence the way it is, but playing with my words as I sure. do. Um, collaboratively work with the students, staff, board, and community regarding the educational interests and needs of all, I put stakeholders, but no, mm -hmm. I think that's the wrong word. Um, um, well, Bob used a very important word, I think, in his explanation, and the word was responsive. Okay. <clears throat> and I think responsive is better than approaches. That they're okay. responsive um, during the selection and implementation of educational re responsive, or er, educational priorities um, responsive or maybe implementation responsive to the interests and needs of students staff um, responsive something in here it will just sort of say respecting what said. the interest and needs of students staff or community so responsive during the selection and implementation of educational priorities, uh, respective of the interests and needs of students, staff, board, and community. 
responsive during the selection and implementation of educational priorities mm -hmm. with respect to the interest and needs of students, staff, board, and community. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, I, I can. More comfortable with that. I do. I can digest that sense. It makes more sense to me. Where before, I mean, it was just. It seems so broad and so vague that I really didn't know what we were looking for. <laughs> who's with us every step of the way, not heading in that direction while we're heading in a different right. direction. You know, everybody coming together for yeah. us with the same focus. Mm -hmm. I actually see something in here that's kind of redundant. I didn't see it before. Okay. It says recruit, hire, and retain qualified staff. And then down below, address the needs of staff shortages within the district. I mean, can that, like, some of that be combined or? Recruit, hire, and retain qualified staff is an opportunity. It's also a challenge. Um, it's a challenge in the, this day and age. It yeah. is. But right now, the challenge we have is we are short-staffed. And so I want to know how they're going to address that. And, okay. But it, it is redundant. It is. A, well, and it's a kind of a funny sentence or statement. Address the needs of staff staff shortages. So the staff shortages have needs. The needs of. Well, what I had originally listed was just staff shortages within several district departments and programs. And then, because um, I had listed one, two, three, four, five, six different challenges that I see facing the district that I felt that an incoming superintendent should uh, know and have a little wheelhouse going of what they're going to do. Um, and it was staff shortages within several district departments and programs. And Brooke helped with my wording because she felt some of it was just very short or targeted or negative, mm -hmm. which wasn't the intent. It's just these are facts. These facts. Mm -hmm. So um, we came up with address the needs of staff shortages uh, within the district. So address the staff shortages within the district. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So then, do we want to remove the recruit, hire, and retain qualified staff? No, I think we we'll keep them both. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other one that I just sentenced that I, I actually took out as well <laughs> was facilitate the articulation of a clear and inspiring educational vision for the district that can be shared and supported by all stakeholders. I just felt that was a long sentence of lofty words and I don't know what we're looking for in it. So I just took it out. However, Bob would like it in. So we should, it's highlighted in yeah. Lello. So, Bob, when you read that sentence, what does it mean to you? Well, once again, I think, you know, we're looking to the superintendent as the leader of the school district, Correct. staff in the community, so on and so forth. 
And that person needs to be inspiring, they need to be uh, dynamic, they need to be able to articulate uh, the kinds of things that the board has set out as, as goals and carry that out to the community and you know, all the rest of the stakeholders as well. Once again, trying to bring everybody to the same page is what I'm looking for. Okay. So I would rather say ability to bring everybody to the same page. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. Word, word spinning is not my heart. <laughs> it's all good. I just that when we, my my struggle is when we get into throwing out all these words. I feel like sometimes we lose focus on what we're really looking for, because we're just using big words because we have them. Which these aren't big words, but I mean it's it's just a lot of words to say something as short and sweet as you just said. Maybe it's just articulate a clear and inspiring educational vision yeah, for the district that can be shared and supported by all stakeholders. That's a little more direct. Uh, goals that is part of our um, legal obligation is to set goals for the district and if, I mean that that ultimately in my mind is the the purpose of the superintendent is to carry out those set those goals and it is the mission it is the Job of the board to set the mission. Right, and we have all sorts of missions. And my own understanding of what a vision is uh, is not all that. Right, and so we have a mission. We have lots of missions. We have our mission. We have what well, when I got on the board, the, the mission of the district is, and then I know which I do think is appropriate that every school has their I guess, yeah. own mission mm -hmm. um, because they're their own company within a company. Um, but I've yet to fully understand what our vision is because I don't think we have one. Not that we champion on as much as we do as a mission. But um, I do think what you said uh, needs to be stated first and foremost. So what exactly did you just say? Carry out the goals in such a way that the work. That is the. Opportunity and challenge. Okay. Um, and we can let's like be kind of specific. Carry out the district goals as set forth mm -hmm. by the board in, in district policy. <coughs> so carry out the district goals as set by the board. Is there any other words that should be added to that? But no. I think anybody else? Yeah. Articulate if the people ask, those would be policy and okay. sit plan and, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that one sentence, articulate a clear and inspiring educational vision for the district. Period.
Um, there's the statement is worded funny. Willing to lead in a long range facilities planning. I was just looking at that. In a facilities planning. Or a plan. Or long plan. range facility plan. Mm -hmm. Well, but it is a, where, oh, it's a project, you know, you, you have to kind of look at it as willing to lead a long-range facilities plan. Well, what I'm a little confused on on the whole long-range facility plan is, I mean, when we got on this, we asked about it, and we were told that it was already that we already have the long-range facility plan and that it's in effect for 10 years. So it needs to be revisited and reformulated to address the current needs. But not, when the bond didn't pass, it was just Drop. tossed to the side. But it's still in effect. So mm -hmm. that's, I mean... Okay. It's there for background information. Okay. It's not necessarily your plan going forward because mm -hmm. That plan obviously didn't fly, <laughs> and no. so you know the it's fallback position is well we can take a look at that and see where we went wrong, but we obviously need to move in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would just say uh, lead in a long lead in a long range facilities planning. Took out the A. Yeah, project or willing something. To lead. Yeah, willing to lead in long range facilities planning. Yeah, we'll just take the A out. Okay, what about just taking out the willing to? Because they can't not be willing to. They have to. They have to. Yeah. Lead. 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 lead in long range facilities planning. Yeah. yeah. It's like asking my kids, would you like to take the trash out? And they say no. And then I get back. I just <laughs> asked them if they wanted to do it. Yeah. No, I don't want to. I will, but I don't yeah. want to. <laughs> So lead a long-range facilities plan. Or lead in long-range facilities planning. Yes. Because you're you're leading the project to come up with a plan, but you're also continually leading in carrying it out as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So lead in long-range facilities plan. Planning. 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 We're back to planning. Yeah, we're just going to do a couple. Under your string. Maybe. You have to do exactly because it's not smart enough to. There we go. Lead in long range facilities plan. Um, can we take out the rest of the willing twos? So willing to review, I mean, is it an option to review and improve instructional programs? Oh, I think that's good. Um, I'm willing to use emerging research and best practice methods in the area of curriculum and instructional design. So that would just be mm -hmm. use emerging. I'm, I'm going to tell you, most of this is almost more for our benefit than the, than the candidates, because any superintendent that has been around knows all these expectations. Right. Yeah. So it, it kind of lays out ahead of time what our expectations are, so they can reflect upon those. But in terms of knowing or being willing or having the qualities, they're all there. Yeah. Well, I would expect that if somebody read through this and they were interested in the job, that when they came to apply for the job, they would lay out before the board their plan to accomplish they would, these things. They would mm -hmm. these things. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That would be my expectation. Yeah. yeah. But under qualifications, we do have a willing to establish residency in LJSD. Do we want to just say establish residency? Or? 
I kind of like the real name. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> on, that one, on that one, well, and on that one, I mean, maybe they haven't right now yet, but they're willing to do that for the community. So right. I like that. Like yeah, maybe we are hiring too. somebody from yeah. Coeur d'Alene and they're driving this year, but then they're they're willing to become a community yeah. member by moving moving here rather yeah. than and you I have to already be here to get yeah those those other things are like this is what the job entails and then mm -hmm. the willing to for the residency I see is just the, the deal breaker mm -hmm. it's like okay so you're going to do all this but now you've got to be willing to do this mm -hmm. and if you're not willing then or kick maybe, rocks yeah, we'll uh, one of the sen sentences that was on the first thing we were given was develop a unified leadership team that in turn will develop comprehensive management systems to support success for the district school staff and students. Okay, I struck that sentence because I didn't like it. And then I wrote in red, create a unified district. But then that was taken off, which is fine, mm -hmm. but I don't know if we want to go back to the original sentence and wordsmith it to make it more of what we're trying to say, which I don't know what we were trying to say in that other than we just want to be unified all around, straight across the board. But I think we sort of, I, I think a couple of things <coughs> has to be, I would expect that there would be some personality, um, latitude that comes with the job and that if this person being hired comes in and sees um, these different teams and groups or whatever that have been established that they might have a better way they might think it's great and keep it I mean I, I, as far as the establishing um, the camaraderie kind of thing mm -hmm. I would just expect person to do that. I mean, you're in a big district, you're in a big business, you would, you know, I hate to leave with, you know, don't be clicky. <laughs> you know, don't, don't create barriers, don't, right. you know, view everybody equal. I mean, I just, I mean, we can put something like that on there, but I think they're ne they need to also be able to come in and survey what's going on and maybe improve or take away or add, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I would hope that whomever comes in that that would be their goal anyway. Yeah, I, think you're, I think you're right about that. You know, a new person coming on the scene, you know, they, they will sit back and assess if smart. for a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But they may have used some things in their previous life, wherever that was, right. that worked well for them. And after they assess what we're doing and how it's going, they might want to begin some modifications and you know I think we need to be flexible enough to like, expect that and allow oh that yeah mm -hmm. I would think so yeah 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 I mean I totally understand what you're trying to say there and well no the sentence was there and I didn't like it oh so I okay. shortened it down to create a uniform district <laughs> right right <laughs> but I don't know if we even need to have something along those lines in there um, because to me, the, state, the statement create a unified district is a challenge. It is also an opportunity. I and mean, I don't think one person can do that. I think right. that's a bottom up, and that's really what I want to know is this person's philosophy. Are you a top down or a bottom up? Right, right. You know, because the unification really starts at the bottom. Right. It doesn't start at the top. And one thing that Brooke did point out, she goes, if you say create a unified district, to some degree, you're saying we're not right to start out with, and right. that's not accurate right. because we are yes um, for the majority. Yes, so and that was my struggle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I get that. I totally get that because I wasn't. I was just. I didn't like that long wordy sentence because I'm like, what are we saying here? And so I'm like, oh, great. It's, it's a like complex <laughs> organism. You know, it's very. It's very complex. Yes. It is. Well, it's a history. living thing, right. too. It's, it's always right. changing, changing. So it's yes. not just a, right. you know, it, you, you make this change and now we're good and we're always going to be good and that's that. It's, right. It's right. Always has, you always have to be. Uh, another thinking one that, and learning and flexible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Another one that I added was aging facilities in need of major repairs, renovations, or replacements. Um, I know Bob didn't like, you didn't want that on there. Um, but then Brooke helped soften it because I really think someone coming in needs to understand where we're at with our buildings. <clears throat> I think it's huge that they need to understand. You know, we have buildings that need repairs, major renovations, which basically should just be a replacement potentially. So that, I mean, those are, those are huge challenges that they need to realize they're coming into. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we... And I like this because it doesn't say that our, our buildings are crumbling to the ground and we've got to, it's, no, you're, you're seeing that there are repairs that need to be, you know, just mate, I mean, just ongoing preventative maintenance, right? Which mm -hmm. we all know wasn't happening for a long time. You know, it's not just the reactive nature of maintenance, but you know, being proactive and, and staying on top of that as well. Um, you know, and once again, you know, superintendents understand that uh, in order to meet, for example, today's technology needs, buildings need renovations at some junctures mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. Buildings uh, have a useful life, and if you don't maintain them, well, that useful life is shortened. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't done that, then you maybe look at replacement. Or, you know, they, they understand, you know. So I think it's important to have something of that no notion there. I, I certainly agree with that. I, I think we just try to bring it to a positive. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like the wording of this. Okay. Good job, Brooke. Uh, and then another point that I wanted to make sure was on here was overcrowding in current facilities. Um, That's a challenge. It is a challenge, um, but it wasn't, uh, it was taken off. And so we kind of talked together, because Brooke's like, we need to make a positive. Um, address the challenges of rapid, rapidly growing community and its impact on our school of mm -hmm. Amherst address the challenges of a rapidly growing community and its impact on our schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> my favorite one was inadequate funding at the state level. Okay. <laughs> so uh, to soften that, it was address the challenges created by insufficient state funding. It's just inadequate to me. <laughs> but... Um, They're t they've got a they've got a bill on the floor that's uh, going to do away with property tax. However, it will leave bonds and levies for school funding still on, and raise our state sales tax. Yeah. That, so I don't yeah. think that's going to fly. No. I don't know. You never know. Eight and a half percent sales tax. I think is what they would. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah, it's claiming that's the, the, the highest in the nation, but it's not. No, so I'm what? like, yeah, I know, yeah, I thought it's not. not. That's no, weird. Why don't you even cross the board? Right I know, I'm like, I don't like going to that's Washington. That's why they all run, come over here to Yeah. Show. So maybe if we raise it up to that, then they'll stay over in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so thoughts on that, Randy? Because you look like you're thinking. See, that's one of those that, you know, you know local school district superintendent <clears throat> can't do much about that except from a you know, bully pulpit standpoint. But I want to know... And, and whether or not they'll get engaged with, you know, the, the associations and the, the state legislators and others who can actually make changes that would be helpful. And, and, and volunteer suggestions to do that. Right. But I also would like to know their philosophy about the fact that, you know, we are inadequately funded. So what's your go-to solution? Is it taking every taxable option available? I just think that the insufficient part is, uh, that's relative to your opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. Mean, I mean, I don't entirely disagree. I just think that to say it's insufficient, I mean. Well, my word was inadequate. Okay maybe limited state funding or 
created by the limits of state funding. Or and what, yeah, and what is it about the perceived notion of the insufficient state funding that we're trying to accomplish? I mean, are we asking them, you know, give us your creative flow on how we can afford more staff, how we can afford more curriculum? I mean, what, what are we trying to, because I have to agree with uh, Trustee Jones, they, outside of being involved with our local legislators and all that, they can't do much about the state funding, but maybe budgetary wise or looking throughout the district, they have ideas. I mean, I don't know. Um, well, what do you want them to do about the state funding or what were you thinking about what? And I don't probably want to change insufficient to limited or some other, mm -hmm. some other Okay. Um, but it is a challenge that mm -hmm. not every district and every superintendent has to deal with constantly. Right. It's the tension between you know what they're doing at the state level and what forces us to do at the local level in terms of the override levies. And well, and that that's just it. I mean, we're limited not just in state funding. We're limited in local funding. We're limited in taxpayer funding because. We can't just tell taxpayers that you're gonna pay this much more. We have to get their approval to, you know, for those bonds and levies. Unless and every stuff. single so. year you enact an emergency levy. But even that's limited. Yeah. It is limited, mm -hmm. but it's also an opportunity yeah. that, you know, you can spin it any way you want and come saying, we have this emergency when we may not. Mm -hmm. Because we have other resources within our own that we can look at, reanalyze, and move forward. It shouldn't be an opportunity to grow a savings account based off of emergency funding. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just, I don't want someone to come in that thinks that the sole burden of educating these students is on the taxpayer, mm -hmm. because that's not gonna fly for some of the communities. It's, that, always, it's well, always on the it's, taxpayer. It's just yeah. a matter of whether it comes from taxes at the state level that taxpayers pay or whether it comes from the local level that taxpayers approve. Right, but we can't, I mean, I just, yeah. Okay. So you want them, what, what you really want them to do in this address is really what you're asking them to do is um, create a funding. How are they going to come up with the creative funding? How are they going to? We can leave it this way. Um, I, I understand what you're getting at now. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe you're talking more about the budgeting process. I, I'm not sure. In terms of, you know, the, how can the superintendent offer us some alternatives? In the context of our budget, that can alleviate the pressures that are applied through limited state funding and or well i would just even just say limited funding I mean, yeah it because it so address the challenges created by limited funding mm -hmm. bottom line yeah in other words and from, see, right yeah see the problem you have you could, you're working against a double-edged sword with the state funding. The additional state funding would allow you to take the pressure off of local taxpayers through, you know, the override and that sort of thing. But remember that with added state funding, watch every time they pass a bill, there's more strings attached. Yeah. Right. That's you that's lose your control. Yeah. You lose your not control. Uh, that's not the word I want. Um, The ability to place the funds where you actually need them. Right. Yeah. You, you're li yeah. They yeah. tend to the airwork them much yeah. more than that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we'd like to see, obviously. Okay. So I, I think the overall gist is that we really need or are looking for a superintendent that <clears throat> is open to working with the board, right? With input and respecting the board's input because we do talk to the community that the superintendent right. will not hear from. Right. Right? 
um, and working collaboratively, that seeing that everybody is at an equal basis, whether it's a parent, a teacher, that's the one thing I want is this superintendent to allow the voice of those within the district, staff, student, uh, parent, guardian, whatever, to be heard on an equal basis. I want this everybody fearful to say anything to go away. Yeah. And I understand there will be some of that, but there have been two, in the two years I've sat here, outside of two parents, that I was elated to hear pure, honest, straight talk. Yeah. And that's really what, it's the only way things get fixed. Mm -hmm. You right. know, if there's a problem, let's deal with it figure right. it out right? right let's don't ignore it if there even if it's a even if it's a perceived problem right if, if it's something that's working great cool let everybody know let's figure out how we can propagate that thing across multiple areas mm -hmm. um, and that's really what I'm hoping we'll get with the incoming superintendent that um, because I think we do think we have a great district. I think we have some of the most dedicated staff yes. around. Not oh, that all sure. staff are dedicated, right. but I really feel like the staff in Lakeland are like, this is their home, these are their kids, mm -hmm. this is their district. Like, they right. have a they lot of They take ownership pride. of, yeah. yeah. And, and I appreciate that so much. I, I really, they're not here just to do a job and collect a paycheck. Right. Um, and, and I I would want them to feel more valued maybe than what they have felt. Um, because I, I do appreciate them, you know, very much right. so. Yeah. It's, a, it's a tough job. It is. You know, no matter where you're at right. in the district, it's right. a tough job. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I, I'm excited, I think, that um, Everything's gonna work out just fine, and um, I just, I just I feel very positive about this whole thing uh, going forward. Are we there? <coughs> I think so. Yes, as far as I'm concerned. Um, qual under qualities, we have a visible, open, and collaborative leadership style, and then like six lines down, a visible and accessible leadership style. Mm -hmm. Oh, looky there. So those are double dipping. Yeah. Which I, I am. That means it's <laughs> double and important. It's, it's important. It must be a qualification. Especially that <laughs> visible part. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. I, Any other input or critique or anything within the entire document? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's a good, like, a foundational yeah. Um, opening. Yeah. So my question is for the board. Um, since you guys have hopefully buttoned this up, I mean, are are we able, Morgan and I, to? put this into the similar brochure that I, I showed you guys and to get this posted tomorrow. I'm, I'm good with that. That would give us mm -hmm. 30 days. Yeah. And that was yep. a cute brochure. You guys did a great job. Yeah, yeah. you did a great job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was I love it. That was my little Morgan. She did a great job. Yeah, awesome. Are you taking away the minute? No. Oh. <laughs> I was like, da da da. <laughs> Tapping your foot. <laughs> it's chilling. Just listening, absorbing. Your response. Did you even see me leave some words on there? Yeah. Did you I see that? It. Yeah, I saw your name pop up a couple of times. I'm getting brave. <laughs> Way to go, Dave. Wait till, wait till next year. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no stopping. Uh, oh no. <laughs> okay, so on the That's superintendent awesome. search timeline, is there um, 
We've got an uh, application deadline of April 30th. We need to pick a date and time, I guess. Invitation to staff members, parents, students, and community members to participate in the selection process. Um, I think that could be it. Where, where, where are we at? Invitation to yeah. Well, I'm thinking more of community participation. Uh, I thought they were meaning more like open forum kind of you know, come meet the candidates <coughs> kind of thing you know. Well, that's what they had at the school for the football coach. Yeah, so that was really good so that community could uh, send in questions mm -hmm. and then they all answered. Mm -hmm. So we did put that down on the main interview date, if you look at the timeline there. Mm -hmm. um, I had placed possible Q&A and public forum. So those would be the groups, um, different interview groups um, mm -hmm. that you see on each bullet point there. Okay. When Bob and I talked about a possible Q&A, um, what I have envisioned and kind of explained to Bob was that um, we would have an open forum for the public, whoever would want to attend, staff, parents, students, maybe at Lakeland High School, and then they can do uh, questions at the door and as have a neutral moderator mm -hmm. um, in the, that would go through those questions just so you know the, the questions are appropriate and nobody's going out of, out of line or anything like that. And then we would address that. And then maybe, I don't know, at the end, if they wanted to maybe on an exit, you know, make comments or, or rank or whatever. Yeah, I'm, fi I'm fine with that. Um, I do think we need to make space up north, though. Um, it's, yeah. It can be burdensome for some of our families to come uh, yeah, I've all about this that way. Too. So what about... I mean, we can also, like, Twin Lakes is in between there. Mm -hmm. And so if we did something like that within the gym at Twin Lakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that's not too far. That's pretty good if you cut, cut over. Because I'm thinking all the Bay Views, mm -hmm. anybody in South Bonner County, you know, all the Spirit Lake people. Um, you know, if if they were interested, you know, at least the opportunity would be there. But yeah, we could we could do that. That would probably be good. Um, so that we're getting that part should probably be in the evening during the week or something. Yes. So most people can be there. Mm -hmm. You know, like at five thirty or something. Well, who would we have as a moderator? Well, I think moderator ideas should be put in a fishbowl and drawn out. I don't think anybody should be picked. I don't think there should be any hand selection of anything. I think it should be paper bag, fish bowl, and whoever it is, it is, right? right. That way there's no, um, in, you know, even perception of impropriety, period, even impropriety, you know, it's just, okay. you know, who, whomever, you know, um, they can throw their hat in the ring and can draw it out. Yeah, yeah and it's just known as pop luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you might get lucky and you might not. Yeah. You know, well, you need to have somebody who understands the process, you know, has the ability to speak before people and, and uh, can actually moderate if it's necessary to do that. So then all I'm suggesting is that whoever is selected, if they don't already have some experience of that, needs to have some educating them. Right, yeah. Well, I would assume that whomever went in the hat would have the education. I mean, I can't believe in this huge community we have a single person that's qualified for that. No, no so, I agree with that. You know, we could contact those people or put the word out and say, hey, the board's looking for, and, and then those people can... Um, I'm just suggesting that for the sake of our, our patrons as well sure. as the sake of the individuals who are in the process, you want something that's you know clear, concise, well done, controlled, right. positive situation. Yeah, yeah. right. Definitely yeah. has to be controlled and there has to be yeah, other controls in the in the area. 
Um, you know, maybe even a little red, yellow, green light system. I don't know. But yeah, I agree. So we've agreed that the location for Q&A uh, would be um, Twin Lakes, correct? <clears throat> All right. Um, do we know how large that gym is? Do we know what? Do you, how many people showed up for the football? Although the football coach, I think, might. Not very many. Them. Oh, really? Not community members. Oh, okay. But it was on a Saturday. And it was. Well, and how was it? How was it advertised or sent out to to do that? I didn't even know about it. Yeah, I, most, I would have loved to. Most it. people that were there are just like junior tackle people. You know, because mm -hmm. they're they want people are uninterested in football. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But uh, Twin Lakes uh, Auditorium uh, is plenty. Yeah, uh, yeah. To, uh, Twin Lakes Village is they got a little stage had, uh, membership mm -hmm. meetings there in the past and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. That's pretty good size. So. And should we provide um, uh, if we're going to do like a five thirty at night kind of thing? I mean. Do we provide sugar, sugar and smoothie? So I think cookies and water. <laughs> yeah. They have cookies and water at ours. So works. the thing is, is like this is what I was thinking. It did, like I said, it'd be on that date of the final in interview. This is kind of what I was, <coughs> I was thinking um, that they would go through because by then you're down to finalists. It's, okay. it's going to be no more than three people. Right. And so, um, and then they would do actually, one would be in a group and we'd circle around those groups. It's going to be another long day, um, but we get this process done instead of dragging it out. I don't want to do the Q&A. Uh, I don't want to do a public forum on the same day that we we're running these people through okay. the interviews for a couple of reasons. One, we're all going to be exhausted because we're doing the interviews all day long. Mm -hmm. And two, they're gonna be exhausted because it's gotta be emotionally draining by the end of the day. I would rather them have the opportunity to be fresh and rested. So if we do it the next day, then we're not dragging it out. We're giving everybody an opportunity to be like, okay, next up. Mm -hmm. That way they can come, they can put their best foot forward with the community, and the community can have an opportunity to actually see them when they're not, you know, expended from sitting through rotating interview groups. Okay, so if you did that, um, would you want to do the next day the possible Q&A? They're going to have to do a final interview with the board and then the board decision. Those three things on the next day. Because I had, all of these were on one day, but the main ones, like I said, maybe pos the Q&A, the final interview with the board, we'll have the group facilitator's input that we can provide to the board, and then you do the board decision the next day. Okay, so we're doing preliminary interviews and then we're doing final interviews. Mm -hmm. Not much. That's what that's what Brooke is saying because we have in the executive session we have the preliminary interviews with the board, fifty minutes each, with ten minute breaks in between. Select three finalists. That's on a weeding down from if we have six. So, uh, okay. So when we have the three finalists, then we have to re-interview them after we've already interviewed them? I would just say that Brooke is pretty optimistic that we're going to have five or six mm -hmm. pre-candidates <laughs> at this stage. <laughs> My thinking is the pre-screening will be down to the three at that point mm -hmm. pretty, pretty quickly. Wait, what? Sorry. Well, I, I just don't think we're going to start with five or six. I think we'll start with three. Yeah, I don't know how many we're going to start with, but I guess what I'm trying to understand is we're doing preliminary interviews with just the board. Then they're coming back to do interviews with administrative directors and staff, 
parents, students, and community members, <coughs> district office staff. So it, and then the board again. Yes. And then they're doing a Q and A public forum. So let's say, let's say, let's say you have, you know, five or six outstanding candidates. Mm -hmm. You are going to have to interview to trim them down. But let's say when you guys are going through that pre-screening process and you only see three, then we take out that preliminary interview and we go straight to right. the bulk of it. And then you divide out this day that I have in here, you divide that out in two days instead of just the trying to cram everything into one. Remember, you could also have people, you don't want to spread them out too far because you could have candidates that are flying in from somewhere. So let's say we don't have the optimism of six candidates to weed out. Okay, so we, we only get four. Okay, I'm good with going forward with four, not weeding it down to three, we'll right. just move forward with the four. Um, so on day one, we have the group interviews with the administrators, directors, and staff, which is one group. We have one group of parents, students, and community members. We have district staff, and we have the board. So we have four group interviews going on with four of those bodies. So each person would start with one of the groups and circle through all four of the groups. The next day they have the queue, and then after all of that, those four groups are coming to the table to the board saying, here's, here's what we've got from our interviews. And they're giving that information to the board. The next day we're doing Q and A, the, they're doing Q and A with the public, and then the board, after the Q and A and the input from that adventure, the board would then reassemble in an executive session to review all the information to make a decision. Yeah. So there wouldn't be then a second interview with the board. No. Okay. Could leave that as an option if after everything that came up, you have follow-up questions for that candidate. On the Q&A? Well, just from all the events, from the other interviews, input from the facilitators, and you see something where you might need to follow up with that superintendent, you could still have that option of maybe calling them in for follow-up questions if the board had that. <coughs> okay, but we would have, okay, I guess this is where you're gonna have to use your HR hat, um, because it's my understanding you can't ask questions of one that you're not going to be asking of another. That's correct. So we would have to come up with more questions, uniform questions to ask all of them. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Based on the input from no, Q&A and it's all that. Yeah. Of some sort. Right, exactly. So, I mean, just like you guys recently had a follow-up uh, some follow-up questions. Um, more in this position, it should be the board that's hearing it, not just one person that's making that. Right, 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 yeah. So I move the possible Q&A. Just, if we're looking at this sequentially, that this is the order in which it happens. Okay. But it makes sense that after everybody has their interview say blah 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 then that then the public you know whomever comes to the board and says here's our recommendation then there's the q a forum then the board makes a decision so i put that last group on a separate line since it's a different day okay. just so we don't confuse it that you know everything's there going to be done on the same day and then we have that date the, the board decision, you mean, is, is its own day? Yeah, okay. you were going to do the executive session, and the, we'll have the group facilitators recommendation. We'll do the Q&A, and then the board decision yep. would be the next, the following day after the green. 
Okay, so that's day one in green. In the green, yep. And then, but they should also be having their interview with the board, which I guess would be this one. That would be on the same day. The and green. then, so then, I mean, if you guys want to take out that one above the preliminary, but I would just say that, um, because you already have your special pre-screening, so you could take out that executive session preliminary interviews and just be confident that you're going to have, you know, no more than four candidates. Well, I think we'll get into it. Okay. I'm just going to line through it. But yeah, I because if it. we get there, then we have it in the, in the mix, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to have to do it if we get a handful of people. Mm -hmm. If not, we'll just skip it and jump to the next. Um, so May 9th is a Monday. Do we want to do this on Monday, Tuesday, no. or do we want to do it Tuesday, Wednesday? I took the liberty and added uh, that Trustee Bain would be unavailable on the 9th and the 10th on, oh, May, thank on, you, on the, <laughs> on the uh, May calendar. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So we need to change the brochure. Okay. Yep, so we won't be able to... Um, do that so um tell us your secret date when you're gonna be here. I mean I'm just won't be here those those yeah, days. Yeah, the sixth through the tenth. So we want you here. It would have a board meeting on the eleventh. So can we seventeenth, eighteenth? Bump up to the next week. Or do we want to do Thursday, Friday? If you bump out to the next week, then I would be extending your application out because you don't want this big gap of time yeah. where you've stopped accepting applications and you're not interviewing. Yeah, I was going to say we just do the first week of May. Is that not, I mean, if it closes on the 30th, which is what day of the week? That would be uh, a Saturday. You just need time enough to do the paper screen. Yeah. Okay, so then do interviews four five or five six so i'm going the sixth as well okay so, so the sixth through the oh, tenth is what i'm So basically the date that you guys decide that it's going to close probably should be the day that um, you guys should either be meeting that night or the next night to pre-screen your applicants. What's our closing date for? Well, we did have April 30th. Oh, okay, that's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. So if we stick with so April 30th, we then need, we need... What do we need for paper screening? Two or three days? To pre-screen? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you guys had... to you pre-screen on your own and then come together as a yeah. group? Yeah, I would take maybe a day or two. Yeah, a couple so of probably days. have at least you know forty-eight hours on your own, and then come to the board. So mm -hmm. would we be ready by the fifth and sixth? I guess is where I'm headed. So oh, you're, you're gone on the sixth. I'm six. gone on the sixth. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So we have to do the second and the third, do the fourth and fifth, okay. second and the third for pre-screen, the fourth and fifth for. Um, what were those other? Well, you'd be onto the green by that point. Yeah, onto the green. The, that's pretty. That, if that's not giving them any kind of notice, if, especially if we've got somebody, I you know, think, if we've got anybody I think, outside right. to make arrangements to get here. Exactly. So because if we're screening on the second and third, we can't interview on the fourth and fifth. That's right. way too fast. 
do the pre-screening on the 12th and 13th? Those were the oh, interviews. Oh, oh, those would be interviews. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the pre-screening then on the 2nd and 3rd. Okay. No, um, no. We'll have to move to the 3rd yeah, and the 4th. Because <coughs> Monday's the IVB team meeting, okay. which Bob and I both will be at. Unless we're done by then, but it's on the calendar. from days planning meeting here okay so are you able to change that Bob if we're on the third for pre-screening what time is their meeting 515 uh, to 7 restroom things yeah I'm not involved in that it's on our calendar they have our boardroom it looks like yeah the chamber might be yeah, but uh, but that's a special committee right so so it's not a problem for me Okay, but I'm talking about the boardroom because they've had our they have our boardroom. Oh, on the oh third. that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So would chamber be able to move that? Their meeting location? That's, that's up to Ashley, I don't know. Okay. I could meet down the stairs <coughs> in the other room. Right. I don't, I don't know how I don't know they can because last board meeting there was a lady sitting out here when we were finishing our board meeting because she couldn't go down the stairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so she's she she has to be she can't do stairs. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay. And that's on the third. Mm -hmm. Well, what we have to do, and if I correct me if I'm wrong. Why here. would you have two meetings anyways? I you mean, know, can't you just do it on the fourth? Yeah. I mean, if we mm -hmm. take the third, second, third, and fourth to come come by and and look through the apps, and then meet on the fourth to decide who the finalists are. Well, we should be getting these all through Apple Yeah, we'll get. Mm -hmm. we'll yeah, get we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we don't have to come here to look. I'll route, I mean, I'll, if you want to look at paper docs, then that's fine. But I'll route them. We'll get them electronically. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so we should be meeting then on May fifth. Well, the fourth is open. Fourth is fine. So, do you want to do five thirty on the fourth? Because I'll reserve this board room. Oh, on a Wednesday? Yeah, I really like to bump it to the fifth. Yeah, I'm good with that. Oh, I know what's on the second. The worst in the negotiation. Okay, so right. the the fifth Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. At 5:30. Yeah. And we're just reviewing applications. Okay. Pre. Right. Yeah. Pre screen, pre -screen. applications. And we'll be bringing uh, chips, salsa, and nachos, and That's, margaritas. Yeah, I was just gonna say. So uh, we can have the Cinco de Mayo fiesta yeah. here. You always think better with margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> better decisions are made. Just kidding. Okay, so. Okay, then the announcement of the final selection. So. So when would we be getting together for the board decision? Because if we're doing 
if the if the the Q and A's on the thirteenth, are we then? Hold on, let me see here. Someone starts my hand on top of the Google Calendar. I'll be able then to support the okay. Well, I would say the board dis the announcement of the final selection should come when the board decision is made. So we should move the board decision down to the second. Well, the thing is, again, just like with this head football coach, oh yeah, you can make a decision to offer the position to somebody and maybe it wasn't a good fit for them. Right. So I wouldn't be announcing it. Okay, yeah, no, I agree. <coughs> we'll say that. We'll say that. That's supposed to be a, an offer and an acceptance. Right. Yeah. Well, we would need. And sometimes, but sometimes there's a little negotiations that takes place. In yeah, there. I know. So I don't want, like, what just happened, where the, you know, the newspapers run in an article about you know the superintendent going north, but then we're told well, we have to wait for contract negotiations, and people are wondering what's going on. And I, I really don't want that to happen. So I don't know how we can, um, okay, new question. When do we want to meet to make a decision so that we can enter into the negotiation process with someone? Well, we would have to, so we just have pre-screening done. Right. Now we have to decide when are these all these interviews taking place, which I assume would be the 11th and the 12th? 12th and 13th. The 12th and 13th? That's what I had down. Yeah. Okay. Which is a Thursday and a Friday. Which is actually kind of a cool time because if someone is coming into us, then they've got an opportunity to spend the weekend and check the check community out. The area. Yeah. yeah. So would we meet then on the 16th to make our decision? That Monday? Mm -hmm. I'm just asking. So good idea to me. Mm -hmm. So I'll we'll make that. We have all weekend to think about. Uh -huh. Well, you would, you would still, Michelle, I see you highlight that pink there. I think it's wouldn't this be this part be on Monday where the announcement of the final selection? Nope. Okay. Um, so the community forum would be on the 14th then, that Saturday? If you're wanting in a separate day. No, the community forum's on the 13th, which okay. is Friday. Yeah. And then the, the four functional group interviews would okay. Everyone is on the third. Is on the twelfth. So then, if we make a decision on the sixteenth, we would then be able to extend an offer on the seventeenth, or even the sixteenth, um, and do. Oh, that's not, oh, I'm in March. Good lord. Um, and then we could do an announcement of the final selection. Oh wait. Hopefully by the twenty third. I think. I would think so because then we could have. So the contract negotiations and all that would go would start on the seventeenth, but then this announcement of final selection would be on the twenty third. Because we've already got Unless an offer got acceptance. Got right it depends. On, I would leave that kind of TBD yeah. based on how long that negotiation yeah. takes. Because okay. you don't know. I mean, if it's done and they accept and they're good to go and ready to rock and roll, then there's no point in dragging it out till the 23rd. Okay. Okay. But, I mean, maybe there is a little bit of back and forth and, right. and sometimes Absolutely. that can take time. and right. I need to sleep on it. I need to think about it. I need to talk to my family. I need to see, you know. 
So yeah, I think that kind of just needs to be a yeah, see how long the rest of the process takes. Okay. Um, dependent on. Now, scooching back up to the top before the 30th, uh, invitation to staff members, parents, students, and community members um, already have one person that w wants to be involved. Uh -huh. um, so how, um, how are we going to send out that invitation? Is this a, an email or a sky alert or what are we doing? Yeah, and I had I had mentioned down there that um, we would have our building administrators recommend staff, LEA, student leadership. Oh, that's right. That's right. And parent groups um, such as your PTAs and boosters, student leadership, um, things like that. And I I've, I've set up a spreadsheet in that folder there um, that shows like for each building recommended interview teams and okay so we have all 12 principals are they It's a little bit of question whether you want all of those yeah. involved or Elementary you know, one from level. each level or two, yeah. you know, something like that. Well, if we have a, this is where I got a little confused. Well, one of the things that, you know, is a little bit awkward about that, I mean, it's a priority issue, but, you know, if you take, for example, all 12 administrators out of their building yeah. for a full day, that's a big deal. It is. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but if, we are taking teachers out for a day too. That's exactly even worse. Yeah. Um, do they have to be gone the full day, or is there a time? I noticed ours was 50 minutes with each candidate. So yeah, because it just depends on how many candidate, candidates in the the rotation. I mean, but you could pick, like Bob suggested, you know, maybe a principal from the elementary, one principal from the middle level, one principal from the high school level, but then you guys are going to be tasked at who those people would be. Well, we just draw out of the fishbowl. Yeah, draw out of half. But um, respectfully, though, if there is only two candidates, that's only two hours. Right. If there's three, it's three. If there's four, it's four. So, I mean, I, it's well, not going to be an entire day. It might be half of a day. And if we started at noon, you know, or two, I mean, it, 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 the timing depends on the number of bodies we have, mm -hmm. number one. And then I think if we bumped it to a later start to help alleviate and make sure everybody that wants to participate can, um, I think that would be hugely beneficial. Yeah. Um, well, and the other thing is too is that even if we picked one from each uh, level, right? Um, I would assume, I would hope that those uh, principals who were chosen then would to get you know input, solicit input from those their colleagues, you know. Right, like all that. Well, and anybody interested in, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Ramona, I did not need to interrupt. Yeah, no, that's fine. Finish. Either, I was pretty much done. You know, all the elementary send it to their rep, all the high school send to their rep mm -hmm. kind of thing. So everybody has a representation of the people. Well, and anybody that might want to meet them and can't and isn't selected to be on a panel is. Yeah, they'd be welcome to be in the public forum and to right. be there for the Q and A right. to meet right. them. And right. So I would think that we should, with the principals, you're sending out an invitation of, you know, please submit your name if you want to be on. You know, we need to determine how many bodies are going to be on these committees, so that when we send it out, 
you, if we only get so many names back, then the roster's filled. If we get more than that, then we have to draw names and let people know. So I think that would be a better uh, solution is to figure out how many persons we want on each one of these teams for interviewing. So that we know what we're looking for. Well, it's, yeah, it's kind of hard. You don't know how many people would be interested, so it's kind of hard to say how many. You don't, but I mean, well, Dave, you just went through your thing for the football. How many, how many people were there on your little team? Twelve, like, 12 that you set on. There were twelve. Mm -hmm. There was fourteen on the football field. I think we need to include like people that aren't in the district. We don't have their emails anymore. Right. Voters, taxpayers. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. They have to say so. Parent group. Well, parent to, groups. You have community thing. members and community, community members. Community members, community members mm -hmm. because parents are always they're involved in everything, and then the communities they're left out of everything, and they feel like they're exactly. not being heard. Right. You know. And all communication only goes to staff and parents. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we so send out, get sent which is a whole discussion for another day. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> Can we send out a flyer that states that we're seeking, you know, if if you're this, 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 or that, and then they have a little thing that they can bring back, drop in, mail, whatever, return to the district office. That's. I don't know if we're going to have enough time to do like a mailer. Yeah. Um, those are really time consuming. Yeah. Just type up something and put it on like Rathman Community News or something. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of members on there. There's a lot of members there. Facebook. I mean, you can also, I mean, one of the things we're going to do is, I mean, we can send this brochure out to Coeur d'Alene Press. Yes. And then also add in there that that's what we're looking for, our community good members to participate, if you want to participate, and then I'll, I'll put a form out there mm -hmm. on the okay. website that they can go to. Okay. Brooke, I have a question. Um, you have one group that's for district office staff. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I'm thinking like, because up above we have directors, I'm thinking like special ed director, which which group would that person normally show up? So, I mean, I would say that um, the district office staff should probably all be in like the directors, like all of us in here should probably be just on one panel um, because of how we interact. And that, um, and that would be about how many people well, that's up here probably, I mean, you know, just maybe a dozen, just okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want the group to be unwieldy. Right. Actually, it becomes a different kind yeah. of problem. Yeah, and so then anybody that would be on district office staff probably then wouldn't participate in any of the other groups. So would the, would the directors be on the central office staff? I would think so. Okay. So we wouldn't have them up with the administrators and staff. I think they need their own mm -hmm. place. We need to strike that from <coughs> Yeah, the so when I say administrators, I'm, I mean building administrators. And directors, there's other directors in the district, such as facilities. Um, and then we also have um, transportation. Right. So they wouldn't be, I when I say district office staff, I'm saying this floor of people here. So up above it, we have a representative administrator from each of the three levels, plus transportation, plus maintenance. Mm -hmm. and and some base, out. base is here though, so we would include base here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so there's probably those five plus mm -hmm. a similar number of staff people it's on our <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if that's if, if that's what you guys are looking for is maybe a dozen per group, then we can definitely work with like that. Okay. So in terms of staff, uh, elementary, middle school, secondary, preschool, or something like that. I don't know. What else? Special yeah. ed. Mm -hmm. 
And again, that's where I'm going to lean on, you know, 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 those building administrators. Yeah, you, you know, you can get full five, six, seven staff people together, representative of different groups, pretty easily. Mm -hmm. I think we definitely need um, Kelsey, you know, the SWD. She would be on mm -hmm. district office staff. Yeah. Um, okay, why? But she should not be under director. But she's part of our team. We have directors oh. here. So she's part of our team on this level. But if you're talking like maybe paras, is that mm -hmm. what you're looking for, paras? No, I was SWD just... SWD teachers to have a voice? Well, that too, but I was thinking more of the elementary school and SWD. I don't see it as part of district admin staff in the DO. I see it part of the whole district and specifically the preschool. Um, I think the preschool has a lot of needs and I think they should have a voice other than just Kelsey because Kelsey is sort of the hovering person. Um, and then we have federal programs, mm -hmm. which I know Lynn is here also in. The, I'm just thinking of these hats that are important that although they might sit here, um, all of the counselors I mean, all these people have a different perspective, sure. you know, in their job duties. Um, and then, you know, whoever's over them, I don't know, literacy, well, I, I think you could probably do a good representation of that anyways with the literacy thing. But um, I just want to make sure we don't miss anybody right. that's in these little hubs that sort of get mingled in with everything else, you know. Right. Make sure that they're being represented. Right, right. Yeah. And then, um, I would like to invite also, um, so what about, um, how would we represent um, the uh, SROs and the armed guards and all that? You'd want to include them in one of these other teams here. I mean, yeah, each group has to have a voice. So yeah. you'd include, you know, your transportation people. And so, like, for example, uh, Mike Ho mm -hmm. Ho Hogan, he's been taking over, you know, as far as the league for the armed guards and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So he'd probably be, like, okay. a good person you would want to yeah. invite to mm -hmm. represent. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, there was another... You know, just to make sure that we hit all those little areas that, you know, they're always out there doing and, you know, we don't Food see. services. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, and, and I agree, That's and we could direct. definitely, mm -hmm. you know, add uh, Kevin um, to that group, which he is so great on interview teams. Um, they are a separate entity, but again, Kevin is part of our, our district office yeah. team. So he would be included, okay, as far as that goes. Yeah. I'm just thinking of all the different interactions we have with the uh, different people in the in the community or different entities. Um, I don't know how much this one matters, but I would be curious from both side input on our um, relationship, whatever it is that we have. I, I don't know that I've ever seen anything, but I know that they're in our schools is heritage health and the mental health people. I would be curious, is there feedback to her if that's even important or I mean, you know, what do you guys think? You know, if you're gonna somehow include the counselors or psychologists or you know, oh, people they, in yes, that they arena, do it you know, yeah. I think, yeah. think you will yeah. yeah. represent that. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that'll work. So on your spreadsheet, I um, put four groups. Uh, one group is the district office. The other group is administrators, district, and staff. Um, the third group is parents, students, and community members. And the fourth group is the board. Um, and so based on your input, mm -hmm. Uh, do you want to put some job titles under here so we know where we're fishing for which group? Um, so that we make sure we have 
representation. <laughs> Is anybody taking out that extra O in group two? No. I'll do it. It's a group. <laughs> it's a group. <laughs> I just didn't want to be in there doing it and have both of them disappear because <coughs> two people are in there doing it. Got it. <laughs> Happy fingers. They like O's. So that being said, um, Within the district office, uh, who will be on that team that wouldn't necessarily be on another group team? Well, like I said, I would hope we would be able to have this whole team together uh, who all have an office here just because how closely we have and they represent several departments so we would have several department representation okay within that team so help me out here okay and give you the names oh you want names the okay um annette beaton accounts payable cindy happeny treasurer uh we would have brian wallace cfo um Christy Graves, uh, Paywall, Lynn Pasley, Federal Programs. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I spelled Cindy's last name. I think it's happening. I think you're correct. Yeah. Okay, so Christy Graves. Who's after Christy Graves? Uh, we have Lynn Pasley, Federal Programs. Then we have me. I'm going down the row here. No, you're fine. Um, and then uh, we would have Susie Adams from base. Um, next one over would be Morgan um, Spear. And then we would have Rebecca Davis, um, Aurora Clough. And then um, Sheila Pote, Kelsey Badger. Kelsey Hall. Oh, and um, Chelsea Peden. I'll fix this. Yeah, fix whatever means I'm totally <laughs> butchered. Because that's an easy happy, happening. No, Lisa? Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, no. Okay. 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 Um, however, I okay. So then, who would be directors? I, you can put Lisa there as a question. Um. So, what is Kelsey Hull's position? What does she do? She is actually our Medicaid filler and the admin assistant in special services with. Kelsey Badger. See, I think Sheila, Kelsey, Kelsey, <coughs> I'm not sure what Chelsea does. I think they need to go over here under this admin and directors because in my brain, they're not administration. In other words, they have a very defined role in special ed, in psych, in all these roles, which I would see them along with the preschool people, with you know maybe SWD teachers. I think that their questioning is going to be much different than you know Cindy Happening or Brian or <laughs> or or Hap what? <laughs> I'm that? Randy Apparently, Jones. I'm Randy Jones. You know. <laughs> School nurses aren't housed here anymore. Or? No, but we would definitely want yeah, Judy yeah, Gerstenberger. Need, need a rep then on the staff. Judy, Judy yeah. would be on the director. Of, I mean, mm -hmm. staff. Yeah. Judy G. I don't yeah. know how to spell her last name. Gerstenberger would be Kevin or, or not. You uh, can just put Nurse Judy on there. Yeah, Nurse Judy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Mike Ferriola. Mm -hmm. 
Jessica Daner. Danehart? Danert. Danert. Okay. D E N H E R T. Kenneth okay. Doyle. We just be having one principle, or um, and then uh, I just have a hard time not including like to say that our principles don't have a place, but our accounts payable person does, or our yeah. payroll person. You know, I I with I mean I understand that they're right here in the same office, but. Wouldn't you want a mid middle school winner? Are you including that in secondary? Yeah, I would do. I would do a mid level. I was including secondary, but we can okay. add a third. I'm just listing these down to see what we want. Yeah. Because to see how big that list becomes yeah. as you yeah. consider somebody from every every different aspect. I just. And what is uh, and what, what what could be helpful? Um, is as if people are like toss my name in the ring, then we know where they can go. Um, but oops, what happened? Oh, that was I think if we took the directors, as Ramona said, take the directors from the district office and put them with the directors of the other direct, have a, a group specifically of directors and then a group of administrators and staff. I mean, it becomes five groups then, but. district office and directors maybe we pulled all of the directors over into group one get and remove some people you know have somebody from finance somebody from HR not everybody from finance everybody yeah 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 kind of department heads or leads or you know however you're right
Hmm? A new clerk that she named her? No, but she'll be with you guys. Yeah. Oh, she'll be with us? Okay. Gotta <coughs> put her name over there then. <laughs> So, so if we removed, uh, like Annette, Cindy, Christy, Morgan, Aurora, Sheila, Kelsey, and Chelsea, and we moved Nurse Judy, Mark Fariola, Mike Fariola. Jessica, Kevin, and Mike over to group one. Mm -hmm. I think that would be. Um, you would remove Sheila Pope though? What is Sheila's. Uh, well, I just know that she's under Kelsey Badger because she's special. Um, she's special with with disabilities. students with disabilities. Or right. does she, she has have much more seniority in the district than Kelsey? I know she does, but I don't, I think she's below her on the hierarchy. True. Her title. True. <coughs> yeah, she was in here. Cindy she's does over Brian as well, but right. they are the director for their, and it's not that we don't value their opinion. Right. We have so many opinions to take into consideration. It's, we have to, So we have Brooks, Brian's, Nurse Judy. Uh, how long has Mr. Ferriola been here? Well, he's been here a long time. A long time. Okay. He's director for at least five years now. But he was mm -hmm. in that department many years for, before, before becoming the director. director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm just looking for longevity there. instead of all the new people giving us an opinion. Gotcha. Um, but, but that's fine. No, I get what you're saying. I mean, if we... Cindy, I don't know why I keep wanting to admit it, it doesn't matter. And she left back over into group one. You're still within a fair range of, mm -hmm. I mean, because group two potentially could have, oh, we don't even have any K teachers, my bad. So 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's yeah. group two would have 16 people. See, what, <coughs> you, you, you know, you can certainly do that. What I see missing is representation from groups like librarians. Mm -hmm. uh, counselors. We don't have counselor, I think. You know, and we, don't, we don't have anything in there for classified staff like secretaries or professionals, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So uh, what I'm suggesting is, I mean, if you want to go with one representative from every grade level, you can do that. But if you need to look at a different alternative to get those other folks involved, mm -hmm. right? And since 
and my listing it down there was just kind of to see how yeah, how long will this exactly. list grow. Yeah. And then, in my opinion, I mean, I don't know. I would just assume, with the exception of the board, <laughs> but if you put all their names in a hat and draw them out and have equal teams, there you go. <laughs> I don't understand what the I mean, unless the questions being asked are targeted in group one to events only of the district office. And then group two's questions are only targeted at the educational environment, the school, school that's it. And then group three, those questions are all targeted towards whatever parents, students, and community members want to ask. See, I, I think that we could break down educational staff, not necessarily first grade, second grade, third grade, mm -hmm. uh, but a teacher from each school. Making okay. sure that every school has at least one person on that. So the right. thing is you have 12 schools. Right. And you just have 12 teachers right there, except for kindergarten. So I know, but that's what I'm saying is you could all, I'm just saying it's an alternative way of looking at it rather than going through because we don't want them to all be from, yeah. yeah. Right, right. To, to right, or, right. You know, no, I'm making know. sure that we kind of, making sure that we spread them out, you know, maybe the first grade teacher comes from one school, you know, just trying to make sure that we're hitting as many schools as possible as well. And when you consider like the high school high school teachers are not teaching ninth all just ninth graders. Correct. A lot of those teachers are teaching, you know, several grade level all, all four grade levels sometimes. Um, and you could have representation, so. for example, from primary. This would be kind of mm -hmm. kindergarten and first grade type thing. Mm -hmm. in intermediate level, middle school level, senior high level, mm -hmm. maybe alternative school because that's a Mm -hmm. Set a pretty big program, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So it's a different way of looking at it. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not saying that we have to to change it from the way we have it, but just making yeah. sure that we are we spread it out over as many schools as we can. Yes, um, and, and I and I agree with that. You kind of work both ends mm -hmm. of the street there, trying yeah. to get all a school every school represented in some form or another, yeah. but also getting So now those two lists are equal. Um, so if you had two elementary teachers, um, you're only hitting two elementary schools. If you have one or two middle school teachers, we can take one from each school. Mm -hmm. um, high school. And however, if we're taking two high school teachers, we're missing the alternative high school. Mm -hmm. So we could let's do that. So 
So you could have a teacher from each high school. Um, a teacher from each middle school. Yes. And then in elementary, it would just be the two teachers out of seven. For example, one of your librarians could be from elementary. That's what I would recommend is that yeah. a library and the counselor and the classified staff, those can be from the schools that don't have a teacher representation. And make sure that the elementary principal and one of the and the team isn't the same from the same school as the teachers as well. You know, that we just make sure that we have that kind of spread out a little bit. Yeah. So there's still, I mean, these are big rooms, but. And then we see the um, preschool. And the only reason I bring that up, even though it would be sort of under Kelsey's huge reign, is that it, it, it's still its own entity with its own needs or issues or what have you. Yeah, it's definitely, it's its own beast at the moment. So then, I would say that for s the educational staff, I don't know if it's just an email that goes out and you state that we're looking for, that this is what we're looking for, and then everyone can submit their name with whatever their position is, because if we get a bunch of, you know, elementary teachers, we're gonna want, you know, we're gonna have to try to keep this spread out and balanced so that there's a fair representation over our entire district. What do you think, Brooke? I would be hesitant to send out a district-wide invitation to staff because okay. I just feel like with our time frame and trying to weed <coughs> through all that, it'd be too much. I would really want to lean on our building administrators to send out an invitation to their staff Because a lot of the times, I mean, you have your LEA members that the staff really leans on. Oh, we didn't put oh, LEA. they wanted to be on <laughs> yeah. the Can you put them with the district? I would yeah. say, yeah. What is the next so, position? Sorry. I'm sorry? What is the next position? She's counts payable. She used to be the treasurer over at the <coughs> too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Brooke, if we kind of put that ball over in the administrator's court with the outline that we've we've given here in terms of selection, but have them work the process of of getting people at each level and so forth, that makes yeah. sense. Well, the only thing that I don't want to see happening is handpicking. I want every teacher to have the same opportunity if they want to be part of the process. And I don't know that that's achieved when an administrator is just saying, well, here's my first grade teacher that I'm going to let you have. Well, so yeah, that's they, the they only thing. They have to agree amongst themselves to do whatever that volunteer, whoever that volunteer is. Okay. Well, and not every, yeah, not every, but not every school is going to be represented. Um, yes, it can. It can. Because there's 15 um, titles under. But you, but you've got three mid, three middle school representatives and you've only got two schools so somebody there's an elementary school that's missing out you've got two principals and 
or one principal and four high school teachers. So that's four high school representatives for two schools. So again, elementary school is not being you know, it has to come from somewhere, so that means that the middle elementary school is in there. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you already have kindergarten separated out. So now you're looking at one, two, three, four, five. So if we have Six is a secondary school. principal and two high school teachers, we can cover all three of the high school arenas. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if we have an elementary principal, <coughs> someone from kindergarten, and two elementary, <coughs> we would need three more oh. to cover each elementary. Well, you've got the librarian, the, the counselor, library. and the classified right. staff right. that could come from other. Uh, OK, so what are you thinking we need in addition? Everybody to be to feel that they're represented yeah, equally. I, yeah, I, um, I want to make sure that every school is represented, right? But I also want to make sure that I feel like uh, opinions get diluted when you have too many opinions. Mm -hmm. um, so then the true. Well, <coughs> so if, if, if you insert another elementary teacher in there, I did. You yeah, have an elementary principal yeah. Yeah. and one, two, three, four uh, teaching staff, mm -hmm. and then a, Six, maybe seven. a librarian or a counselor. Mm -hmm. so, so if you take the, round out the, five. the elementary principal, kindergarten, and three elementary teachers, that's five. <coughs> and then possibly a librarian from the elementary. That'd be six positions. You've got a middle principal and a middle teacher. I guess you could. You've got two middle teachers and a middle principal. Um, what we don't have on here is reach. Mm -hmm. Well, you have your principal on. So do you want me to remove one of the middle teachers? I, I'd have heartworm because that was, that's my heart and soul. <laughs> but I look at I spent it. 10 years there. <laughs> I hear you. They're a special breed. <laughs> you know, everyone that wears a hat in this district has a special place yeah, on that uh, the spectrum of, yeah. of, of everything that we're the district. And so, I mean, I just, I don't want handpicking. I want everyone to have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying if we send it out and say, do you want to be part of it? And you get 20 uh, fifth grade teachers, well, I would much rather just pick one of the 20 because right. that's not fair. Mm -hmm. Instead of having, well, no, this principal wants that teacher and this principal wants that teacher. I just, I don't like that. We have this reputation that we only pick from a small few, and I, that has to stop. And I, that's why I'm like, let it out there. And who knows, maybe only one first grade teacher will be like, I want to do it. And so, okay, there, there's no problem. Then we have one representation who wants to do it. And it is an all day commitment, so. I mean, yeah, who is available? It depends right. on how yeah. many people we have to interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the other thing is, is um, 
with having two middle school teachers, two high school teachers, all that, I always think about um, the the uh, cultural differences just in the district from one end to the other end. Yeah. You know, the further north you get, you're going to get a totally different perspective and view True. versus what you're going to get at the southern end of the district. So I try and in agreement with keeping both middle middle teachers thinking that both ends should be represented, you know, in that. And they have their different, I mean, just everything about them, sports and mm -hmm. academics or, you know, just, I mean, everything about them is different, you know. I mean, I think we've made it fairly clear that we do want to include as much as many people as we can. We do have a, sh a short window to try and make a definitive decision to try and not be in an interim position, although we might find ourselves there. Um, but it's just impossible to include every voice. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we just can't do that. So I think this is a fairly good um, you know, and everybody has our email address. You know, they can always email us with yes questions, yeah. concerns, yeah. comments, right. whatever. I mean, we can always filter through that and think about it and bring it to the interview yeah. ourselves or the community forum or, you know, there sure. still might yeah. be place for that, you know. Mm -hmm. So I guess I just need some clarification on what I'm hearing then because it sounds like you you don't want this uh, you don't want me to have the building administrator send out the message. Are you wanting us to send out what uh, an email to all staff, whoever wants to do it, and then you're going to draw out of a hat, you know, per these. So there's multiples. I mean, I. I or think you're going to have a huge interest. I mean, that's the thing. I hope so. So. I mean, I just need to know what my step is. Am I reaching out to the building administrators and having them reach out to their staff, or am I just reaching out to the whole staff? Well, I had first said you should send an email to the whole staff, but then you said you weren't really comfortable with that. You wanted to just hand it off to the building administrators, and then they and then they can lead who they don't want. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. <coughs> Uh, yeah, maybe. But I, I mean, you can do both, I think. I mean, you can send out the message across the staff. This is going to be the process. If you're interested in participating in that process, contact your building administrator and let them work it back through from, from, from there. I don't want them filtering through them, though. I want us. You want us? I want, no, I want. We're not to filtering. draw a name. We're yeah. not filtering. We're just going to draw, draw a name. name. I want everybody to have any. I don't want anybody to have the opportunity to say, let oh, yeah, no, I'm not going to. Let me know what that name is because yes. I'm not coming. <laughs> no, I just don't want somebody's name not being forwarded because somebody, I don't know. I just, I feel, I don't I, know. I, I have more faith than folks. I can't just set it out district wide and say who wants to participate and then contact Brooke or whatever. Like Brooke didn't have anything to do. <laughs> or somebody else. I don't care. It doesn't have to be you. Contact Michelle. Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, I can't Chelsea, yeah, I don't these care. Days. Contact the I would, board of the I would clerk. say I the know. clerk of the board, but I mean. We're kind of in that yeah. transition right now, so yeah. it's kind of hard to lose. I yes. honestly, I would hope that you know, if, if that's the route you're going to go, that they're going to contact me since I'm working on these materials, and then you guys can draw the names out of the hats of whatever names I receive, and um, we'll put together the list. We can do that, and then just go down the list and say, okay, yeah. there's. This, okay. person's this person fits great. in this, yep. yep. In that situation, in that situation, and yep. we got them all down. We're done. We just need name, building, and grade band or position. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, <coughs> instead of muddying up 
your email broke, would it be, I think it would be better if Chad created an email. Yep, yep, or it's something that, it can all be filtered to an email instead of all in your email. Mm -hmm. You know, superintendent interview. Sure. Yeah, I can do that with Chad. That. Yeah. That way it'll alleviate some of your filter, filter, filter. I'm, well, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to see it anyways. Yeah. So, I mean, it really doesn't matter because okay. he would end up having to forward it to me anyhow. Okay. So. And then for the parent, student, and community members, the the parent and students, I would think, could go out via Skylert that this is coming, these are the dates, if you're interested, you know, let us know. We have a, a select number of positions and we'll, we'll, we'll pull your name out of a hat if there's oodles of people. Um, and then uh, for community members, you said we're gonna put this in the, in the quarterly press. Yeah, we can, I mean, we can send them our flyer and okay. then also just uh, something that states we would like to get out there that we want to invite the community, but I'm in agreement, you know, with Dave. There's plenty of local Facebook pages that mm -hmm. you can are on. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, so between I mean, those two avenues, you catch the, the members that don't have Facebook through the newspaper and then... Mm -hmm. Those there too. There's so some other community groups too that email that don't have anything to do with Facebook out of Bayview and Apple and stuff like that. Um, and the other thing we might think about, because we're going to have to narrow that group too, right? right? I mean, we're sort of trying to keep to this near as 12 as possible. So I think the easy thing we can do is, it, it, which is going to seem small, but we could look at our zones and say two for me yeah. zone, a parent rep and a community rep. And the student rep. Yeah. And it would be 15, but it would be. Mm -hmm. And that's why well, there's 15. I was going to say that's what's in the other groups okay. too. Yeah. So, and so we just, perfect. And yeah. then for each representing each zone, and then everybody mm -hmm. feels like, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. So my question is who's going to go check when we get those names? Who's going to check what zone each of those people? And what zone that they're well, they, in. They'll have to tell us what zone they're in. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, if they don't they know. They your zone can, number. <coughs> yeah, if they don't know, they can look at the map on the website. Yeah, they have to provide us all the information because those without information. Are weeded through, and the other thing I think is those throughout the district who have moved from committee to committee or PTU to PTU. I think we need to give other people opportunity. Also, what do you guys think? Or do we just throw their names in the hat too and draw, give them a chance mm -hmm. to be drawn? What in the community members and staff? How do we know? Or yeah. community members. Yeah, I'm thinking like, you know, students. we have, you know, the PTU participants or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, um, then we have the, um, there's been some other committees here that, oh, we still have the one committee I totally forgot about that, or the <coughs> funding that we have to meet with every six months. <coughs> um, what? The ESSER three funds, remember we had to oh, establish yeah, yeah. the parent committee or whatever to mm -hmm. keep updated the information, right. <coughs> which is probably going to be have to be updated again here pretty soon because everything sounds like is being reverted as of April 18th. Um, yeah, okay, there we go, so we will do that, but <coughs> no, they need to supply us with as much information as possible. Okay, so then, uh, okay, 
Okay, so then on May 5th, um, is when I think we should also uh, solidify who the interview teams are, which is just primarily the, the teacher one and the parent one. Because so if we do that, because we're meeting on that night to screen the potential, mm -hmm. and yeah, we can we can kill the two birds with one stone. Screen both. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> An invitation to staff members. When are you going to be able to send that out, Brooke? Everybody comes back next week, so April 4th. Yeah, I can send it out next week. Okay. I have a couple of questions. Yeah. No, no worries. Uh, why is our. What arrangement would we have for the candidates to see the entire district? In other words, is it the schools mm -hmm. or that type of Yeah, so I had placed on there, like, a, one of the things was, like, a, a district tour. Um, like, during that would be part of the interview process. And the district tour last time was actually the prior superintendent who actually took the... Um, candidates on the tour, but you guys could uh, select a board member or board chair or whatever to do with the tour of the schools. They would just be part, that would just be part of the rotation in the interview process. So it's uh, during the interview process. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. second question is, I know the one the other day was on a Friday when I don't think schools in session, but logistically, where would we do this where we have space for all these groups to Yeah, they're going to be in various buildings. So we do do, um, like I said, you, so you have your Q&A, and then you're probably going to want something <coughs> close to the district office, so probably Lakeland well, High School. Here, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you're going to have a group here, and then you would have another group we'd, like we did last time. We had um, a couple places at Lakeland High School as well. Um, but yeah, you just want to keep, when you have them um, rotating, you want to keep them nearby. Well, could we, we could do one. Close because they, they're going to have to travel. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Well, exactly. Could we utilize like John Brown's auditorium, the middle school's auditorium, mm -hmm. the high school's auditorium? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Or mm -hmm. two locations at the high school and then one at the middle school in here. Mm -hmm. But then, if there is a group, to, if there is a tour of the facilities, if everyone's rotating through, everybody's going to end at the same time. Just not, it's not going to be like one starts with us and then they go to the next group and then another one starts with us and then, so it, everybody's starting with a group at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And then, the and then they move on to the next. Yes. Yeah, so when station. So say there are only four candidates. So at the end of the fourth hour. I would say that all four of those candidates would then be uh, touring the district together. Oh. So that I, w I wouldn't be doing it individually. That would be exhausting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was exhausting for just me well, trying to around. I was trying to detect whether or not that was part of the rotation. Or not. Well, I would say if we want to do that, we should do it after the interviews are done and then take them to all the district schools. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I, I just think it's important that they see the entire district. Oh, I agree. And it could even be shorter because they would already be seeing the high school. <laughs> I mean, not in its entirety, but familiar with that and familiar with the junior well, yeah. high. But the, so that's, I mean. So we should have. The only other issue that I, I don't know that solve this or not. We have one slot for sh classified staff, mm -hmm. but that has to cover paraprofessionals, secretaries, transportation people, maintenance and custodian personnel, and I don't know what else. But well, the, trans the transportation and the custodial will have, their directors are in that that group one. Yeah. You're right about so that. that's helps a little bit. Yeah.
So if we add a total of four classified staff, that increases that group to uh, 18. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, and I think Miranda makes a good point. You know, we've got a couple of those groups covered by the <coughs> So can I say something? I mean, typically when we do this, our groups, we have your formal interview panel and informal. So like if you have a bigger group, that can be more of an informal mm -hmm. group, just going and just asking questions and, you know, getting a feel. And we would still provide them a list of questions and things like that. But you can definitely make that group bigger for sure an informal group can be larger where, where are we on the uh, requirement for the same question every candidate in those informal groups is that a, an issue no not when you're having informal i mean so it's mainly the board saying where that's important yeah, and the and the you know, and if you have like your administrators are going to be of more of a formal. As I say, yeah, this group well. and this group are formal ones, and then those two would be a little bit more informal. Mm -hmm. Although when I sat on the one when we were looking for the another um, armed guard, um, all three groups asked the same questions of the candidates. But I mean, like the children had their own set of questions, but they were all the same questions. Mm -hmm. Parents, same thing. And then the, I was in one of the groups, there were Cootie County sheriffs and stuff. Yeah. I don't know what that label was for that group, but well, we, we all I mean, asked we would, same questions. We, yeah, we would still provide a list of questions. Mm -hmm. And then they would go around. But I mean, with those, like I said, the questions are probably gonna be shorter mm -hmm. and hopefully shorter answers. And so we can make that a little bit more informal. Okay. So then what would be the difference between, so what What then is the advantage of the formal? So the formal, what is the advantage of it? Well, what is the distinction between formal and informal then, if it's the same process? So formal, for you're probably getting, you're getting into more complex questions regarding the position okay. itself and as far as the goals of the district, what the okay. board is looking for, uh, that type of thing, where uh, the informal group is looking for the feel of the person, how are they going to fit in with climate and culture. Okay. Thanks. Okay. One other area that we haven't, I don't think, touched on much is uh, if we have students involved, how do we? sort that one out. If you have students involved, I would just say those are just at the, you know, pretty much at the secondary level and have them in with parent and community. <coughs> I mean, they're most likely, like I say, going to be from your student councils and leaderships right. and stuff like that. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. It's good to know how to interview. <laughs> As far as, I mean, you could easily pull five parents, five students, five community members. Mm -hmm. I mean, but if we do two from each zone, that's 10, and then five students, that'd be a, a representative body of 15. And it could, it could you know, go up to 18, like uh, the other informal group if we want. <clears throat> and that is what it would be if we did three. Mm -hmm. Parent, student, and community member from each zone would give us 15. 15. Right. And then, a, and then a forum. So I think that's fairly inclusive of, I mean, it's just as inclusive as we can be. be. You know, and fair, I mean, I don't know how much more input, mm -hmm. you know, we get, or give, or allow for, or, I mean, I think it's pretty good. Okay. So, do you need more direction on this, or are you good? I'm good for now. <laughs> She's like, like sorry, done. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> don't add more, please. <laughs> 
far as I can tell, everything is dated and um, dead bomb. It's not got a word. It's not thrown it away. <laughs> so everything's dated. <laughs> so we should be good to go on that on the little spreadsheet or time timeline. Thank you. That's what yeah. that sucker's well, that's go. Okay. Um, all right, so I think we're golden. Um, any further discussion items? Nothing needs to have action taken. <laughs> all right. Um, then I move to enter into executive code pursuant to Idaho Code 74206-1B1. Second. Move into executive session. <coughs> a motion and a second. I need a roll call vote. Oh, sorry. You're good. Um, Trustee Quimby? Yes. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Baines? Yes. Trustee Grissom? Yes. Trustee Thompson? Yes. And with that, we're in executive session.